I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk about two works, I think major works within the collection of the Queensland Art Gallery. And they're works that feature here in the Australian galleries where we have our Australian collection, which first opened to the public in its current form in 2017. When it opened, the work behind me by Daniel Boyd was specially commissioned through the foundation with great support from Belinda and Darren Elderton. And that enabled us to tell the story particularly of South Sea Islander uh, migration into Australia uh, in the middle, early to middle part of the 19th century. The work over my shoulder behind me is by William Young. Also, Queensland born artist, but someone probably best known today for the kind of work he's been doing in Sydney since he moved there in 1969. Both of them come from families that have long histories of association with far north Queensland, despite the fact that one is a painting, another a photograph. Both of these works have a tremendous amount in common. And what I'd like to do in the next few moments is just talk about what I think those interconnections are. As a very young man at high school, Daniel was fascinated by history painting and would often draw um, very elaborate pictures from the grand masters of the great sort of British academic tradition. And so when he emerged from art school, he trained in Canberra and decided to sort of take a particular tack uh, toward his Australian identity and his story, he looked at particularly paintings of Captain Cook and uh, in particular, the Weber picture, which is in the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra. And with a bit of a glint in his eye, turned Cook into a kind of a pirate, eye patch, parrot and all. So there's humour, as well as this conscious destabilising of uh, this canonised image of Cook. So you get to a work like this and it's impossible not to see this very fractured surface. Underneath the shiny elements or the reflective elements on top, you've got a rendering on large scale of a very small black and white photograph. It's essentially painted first in oils with some work in charcoal. Over the top of that, he's applied a kind of mottled skin of archival glue that is applied to the canvas through a syringe. You can actually see some of the sort of air pockets as the syringe finishes at work, making these kind of worm trails over the top of the canvas. And for Daniel, that's about both seeing and not seeing. He's decided that nothing, no single image can contain the truth that really is inherent in that image. Because Daniel is a young man of South Sea Islander or Vanuatuan Aboriginal descent, he has this kind of mixed cultural heritage. And what he's tried to do is tell the story of his own identity as a young, Aboriginal or Indigenous man. And this work takes him to the country of his own people and uh, shows what very obviously looks like a white overseer in charge of the South Sea Islander labourers. At Hamilton at that point in time, there was a mixed um, uh, group of workers on the property. There were 176 known South Sea Islanders in the 1880s, in 1888 to be precise. There were 29 or thereabouts Chinese, somewhat fewer white Australian workers, and a very small handful of Javanese. The thing that really broke these labourers down was the fact that the South Sea Islanders were paid something in the order of five pounds six, or five pounds six shillings, for a year's labour. The white Australians were paid four pounds a week, and the Chinese were paid one pound and six shillings a week. So there was an incredible disparity in the value that was placed upon their labour. William Young was born in Mariba, not far out of Cairns on the Atherton Tableland, and spent most of his life growing up in Dumboola, not that far away in far north Queensland. This is a self-portrait he took when he returned back to his homeland, back to the area he grew up, having lived in Sydney and carved out an amazing niche for himself as a major photographer working in the gay and celebrity scene in Sydney. And many of those images as well are inscribed in William's hand, um, sort of in extensio, uh, expanded text about the subject of the work. 
What's really interesting about this portrait, I think, is that um, William can hardly be less ready to have a self-portrait taken. He's dressed very casually, hands in pocket, wearing a T-shirt, which clearly he collected on a trip to China, and with his photographer's light meter just casually draped around his neck. And yet there's a look of concern and maybe even anxiousness as he looks out toward the camera. And the reason for that is revealed in the narrative that's written in William's hand across the top of the photograph. And I'll just read the first line. I stood in the place where my uncle, William Fang Yuen, had been shot in 1922. The fact that his uncle, who worked on this very cane field, who was shot by the white manager of this very cane farm, they believed very strongly that a great injustice had been done to their uncle. His accused murderer was found completely not guilty by the court in a unanimous decision. And this is something that really stirred up a great deal of anxiety and anger among the Chinese Australian community of that region at the time. William later did a series of images which are specially dedicated to interrogating, as it were, the evidence, the court-based evidence that was presented around that particular crime back in the 1920s. So here he is having come back from Sydney, having worked with a Chinese teacher in Sydney for a period of time, looking at Taoism, decided as a part of that learning, he needed to better understand his own origins and history. And while when living as a young boy up in Queensland, he was bullied for being Chinese and was very poorly dealt with as most of his family were. And his mother wanted to, I suppose, sidestep all of that grief and was very anxious that William and his other siblings assimilated into Australia. Being Chinese, she once said to him, was useless. All that will do is, if you like, get us into trouble. And this is a portrait, a photograph, where William has returned to North Queensland to try and reconcile himself with what must have been one of the most tumultuous periods in his family's history. It must have had a big impact, particularly on his father and his mother. And for William, it was one of those um, big moments of his life that he felt he wanted to kind of reconstruct simply by returning to the site of crime. And I think it's an incredibly disarming a very moving, a very intimate self-portrait and unquestionably one of the best that we have in our collection. So in choosing to talk about both these works, what I wanted to do was to reflect on the insight that they gave us to an important part of early Queensland colonial history. One touching upon the very serious subject of slavery as it was in the early days of South Sea Islander blackbirding and uh, bringing people forcibly from Melanesian islands into Australia to work on the cane and uh, banana plantations and so on. And also that early history of Chinese Australians who came out of course initially during the gold era as did uh, the forebears of, of William Young. And of course the tragedy of the murder of his uncle in 1922 that occurred in the cane field in which William is now posing. And I think while both of those stories have a seriousness to them, an earnestness to them, they're both really in a way portraits of family history, portraits that endeavour to try and better understand how our cultural identity is formed as contemporary Australians, no matter where we come from, uh, no matter uh, what uh, immigration wave we came to Australia on, or whether we're indeed indigenous to Australia. I think for contemporary Australia, reconciling ourselves to that story, that history, is something that we need to spend more time doing. And I think for many Australians, we've decided to overlook those chapters in our history, which tell us about the uncomfortable truths of how this land was colonised and settled. These two artists both bring that story right into the foreground. And I think that the next time that you can visit the Queensland Art Gallery, I think you should take a moment to look at them and to reflect on the power and the challenge that both those artists have given to us.